what was a total surprise to me was the fact that he had the museum, his house in Corona, Queens, which I never, I don't know how, I never knew about that. And I've lived in New York City my entire life. Um, and it's funny because I actually almost took a trip to New Orleans instead because I've never been to New Orleans. And my friend was like, no, go to Queens. His house is in Queens. And I was like, oh, I'll go to Queens. So I got a chance to see the house that him and Lucille um, had um, in Corona, Queens, which was wonderful because as you, have you been there before? No. It's amazing. So as you walk through it, um, they, some, they oftentimes play the archives, like the audio archives of him and Lucille talking. So you hear the dynamics of their relationship. Mm -hmm. um, you see how um, Lucille had a knack for, um, for um, I'm sorry, for decorating. And so you see how she kind of kept Louis balanced by creating this home for him. And that's a really big aspect in Lucille's story in our show is that this um, idea of home. And so I went to Corona Queens. I got a chance to see the environment that Louis grew up in. I mean, I'm sorry, um, I'm sorry, uh, not, didn't grow up in, lived in, in the latter parts of his life. And then I, um, the Satchmo book, which I actually have underneath here to help prop my, um, my, uh, my laptop. I might actually lower it down a little bit, but this is the book that I had to read as well. This book is extraordinary because this whole book is about Louis' experience in New Orleans. So this is like pre-celebrity, basically. And in this book, I was lucky enough to find a chapter about Daisy Parker. Wow. And he does talk about her fondly, <laughs> but also talks about the danger of, of who she was and how she um, was a, a huge impact in his life because she one would probably call her a bit hot-headed and maybe dangerous, but also what I discovered in that um, particular chapter was a lot of love and admiration for that type of human being in his life because he needed that type of pull in order to grow up. Um, and oh, I also bought this too. So I actually drink uh, my matcha tea cool. every morning out of my Louis Armstrong cup because I try to keep myself in the world as much as possible so I can feel like I'm submersed in Louis Armstrong because I myself also had to do a lot of research I not only had to read the book but I also had to listen to his music so that way I can understand who the person was and sometimes because there's no information on Daisy Parker I could understand who she is through him because you can see the many facets of his personality and you can kind of pick an act, um, a characteristic and take that characteristic to kind of create the character. There's not a lot of um, visual images of her. There might be one, there's this one photo that they think is her. And so I came from a place where I literally had very little information except for what um, the book had offered. And it gave me the privilege to kind of redesign who I think Daisy Parker meant to him and who she was. And, um, and that's drawing from the, the research, but also personal experiences and, you know, who, what, and in history, like who were the Storyville prostitutes back in 1917? Um, how did they dress? How did they look? Um, what were the things that they, you know, what did they eat? <laughs> Did they have money? Did they make a lot of money? So I had to kind of dig literally deep from the outside and then kind of, after I had all the external information, kind of start internally and maybe create an idea of how she walked. What was her voice sound like? He mentions that she's Creole. So that tells me that she has probably a mixed sort of um, background of not only just race, but also, um, history being in New Orleans and in language. And so that for me was very rich in context and, and a lot of, uh, probably a lot more information that I actually um, didn't think I would have access to in order to create this character. So I, I felt very lucky 